Okay. Hello, everybody. My name is Drew, and this is the beginning of your Metta Meditation Retreat. So tonight we're going to go over the meditation instructions and how to get started. So to start with meditation, you choose a posture. The posture we can choose from is sitting, standing, walking, or laying down. Laying down is absolutely the most difficult posture because we can dull out, right? We lay down to sleep. Seating is what you'll be doing here. You can sit in chairs or you can sit on the cushions uh, on the floor. Sitting on the floor is fine. Um, it can be difficult to sit longer than 45 minutes on the floor. So most people sit in chairs, especially for longer sits. And, uh, Make your seat as comfortable as you like. We have all kinds of cushions here. So once you uh, find your seat, then you start practicing loving kindness. To bring up loving kindness, you remember a happy time or bring up happy memory. Loving kindness is a warm feeling in the center of the chest, a warm radiating feeling. If you have trouble bringing that up, you can remember uh, a happy memory, or some people think about babies and puppies. Um, imagine holding a baby, and what do you do when the baby smiles at you, right? You smile right back. Um, when that wish arises, then you make a wish. Uh, you make a wish for your own happiness at first. So, may I be happy, may I be peaceful, may I have ease. These are all fine wishes. Uh, it's good to stick with the same wish for a period of time and not change it up too much. You can play around with different wishes and what they're like, but you want to not be spending time thinking about what wish you're going to make, more spending time with the feeling of loving kindness. And it's not a mantra or a repetition with the wish. You make the wish one time and you relax and you see what happens after that. And you stay with the feeling. And you stay with the feeling of loving kindness in your wish as long as you can. Um, however, you will be distracted eventually. Distractions come up and that's part of the process of meditation. We don't want to fight with the distractions or be disappointed with ourselves because we have a distraction. This is expected. And distractions are actually an opportunity to strengthen our mindfulness and train our mind. So mindfulness is what powers our meditation. It what makes it go. Mindfulness we can define as remembering to observe the movements of mind attention as it goes from thing to thing. So we're watching the process of mind moving, the process of observation. That's what we are doing with our mindfulness. When we're attending to our object, we're resting in the object. We're not watching our object, looking for something in it. We're using it as a home base for our mind to stay with. As we stay with the pleasant feeling of loving kindness, we can rest in it. When we get distracted, we have a very specific process to bring attention back. When you get distracted, it's it, tension and tightness is generated in the mind. Whenever we have thoughts that we don't notice, that we're not aware of, it generates tension and tightness in the body and mind. If we bring our distracted mind back directly to the object of loving kindness, we bring that tension and tightness back. And that will tighten our mind, that will tighten our body, and that will actually dull our ability to observe what's happening. So. The process is of bringing your attention back is the six R's. The six R's uh, are actually a single movement of mind, but we have divided them out so it's easy to know each of the steps and understand this movement. So the first one is recognize. You recognize that you're distracted. Mind is no longer with the object of meditation and it's on something else. We release that distraction. Release. Uh, we simply redirect our attention to something else. Whatever we pay attention to, we give nutrient to. We reinforce it. And so we stop reinforcing the distraction, and instead we reinforce 
our object of meditation. But before we entirely go back to the object of meditation, we relax. The relax step is the most important part of the practice in some ways. When you relax your head and your body, and you should try that right now, just do that one time, relax all of this. What happens? Mind clears. Mind becomes bright, alert, present. Now maybe this happens briefly at first. Maybe it is so fast you don't notice it, but it happens every time you relax. And as you do that more and more, that open, bright mind will stay with you longer and longer. And this open, bright mind is what we bring back to the object of meditation. And we smile. This is a smiling, happy practice. The smile is now your companion for the next 10 days. When we smile, we brighten our mind and it helps our mindfulness greatly for so many reasons. One, this is a, an instruction. This is our posture. When you notice you're not smiling, guess what? You've lost your mindfulness. And you know that right there. When you smile, it lightens up your attention and lightens up your mind. And it doesn't have to be a real smile, one that you think you want to do. It can be a fake smile. This works just fine. And if you haven't done this practice before uh, or much, it's very common to have resistance to the idea of smiling. There's many reasons we have resistance. It's, it's fake. It's not authentic. I'm an authentic person. I do authentic things. I don't fake smile. Yeah. It's okay. Have your fake smile. Use it as a tool to sharpen your mindfulness and do it as much as possible. And then you return to your object of meditation and repeat when necessary. So that's the six R's. So when you notice you're distracted, you recognize there was a distraction. You release the distraction by redirecting your attention first to relaxing, then to your smile, and then back to your object of meditation, loving kindness. When you come back, bring up the feeling of loving kindness again. Maybe you can do it just bringing it up, just just because you choose to. And if it's difficult, you remember you know, holding the baby or the puppies or whatever memory uh, triggers that. And then you make your wish. May I be happy. Like that. The six hour process eventually will be a few seconds long. Uh, at first, it may be a little longer as you figure out each step. It's not something you have to memorize and do each step and say it out loud, uh, recognize, release. No, it's a single smooth motion of mind. In the beginning, if you're new to the practice though, you may want to sit down at the beginning of each sit and just remember the six R's until they become second nature. Eventually and quickly, it'll be a, a simple thing you do, reflexive, automatic. So that's how you practice. When you get distracted, it's important to remember this is something that happened on its own. This happened for reasons, it happened for conditions, and the distraction came up by itself. We don't have to fix the distraction. And often distractions are us trying to fix things. We have ideas of how things should be and they're not happening, or we're trying to make sure that they do happen. We don't have to fix anything. When you're sitting on the cushion, there's nothing to do except enjoy the feeling of loving kindness. And in fact, trying to fix things is a way to generate suffering for ourselves. It's a way of being dissatisfied with what's happening right now. That doesn't mean we don't want to improve ourselves and improve things and make things appropriate. But if we have an image of what something should be and it doesn't line up with reality and we hang on to that image, that's how we generate suffering. 
You can do this practice sitting on, on the chair and you also will walk. I would recommend you sit at least 30 minutes at a time. Um, if you have a lot of hindrances, restlessness, dullness, it's okay to get up at 30 minutes, but it's, uh, if you can sit longer, please go right ahead, but no less than 30 minutes. Then when you walk, uh, you go outside and you pick a spot, uh, 30, 40 feet, uh, and you walk back and forth between uh, two spots. When you're walking back and forth, you should be walking at normal speed. We don't want to be walking slowly. We want to be walking at least normally. When we walk, we, we get the blood moving in the body. We help uh, get rid of some dullness if that comes up. And it's not necessary to be walking very, very slowly. We're walking with our object of meditation, with loving kindness. Walk at least 15 minutes. When things are going very, very well, you can walk up to 30 minutes. Walking meditation can be a lot of fun. When you sit, you can get deep. You can sit uh, uh, and not have to move, not have to look anything. You can observe mind clearly. When you're walking, although you're not looking around, a lot more is happening. And this leads to a more stable kind of collectedness. And if you get nice and collected when walking, it's easier to bring that with you all the time. Because this is the point of the practice. We train on the cushion, we train on the chair, we train walking so we can bring this uh, out into our lives and do this all the time. Here on retreat, uh, please do this all the time. Whatever you're doing, whether you're walking, showering, eating, going to the bathroom, going to anywhere, keep your smile, keep the, keep the metta going like that. And this will help us bring us out uh, into the world because we're training ourselves uh, to have joy, to reduce our suffering, so we can go out in our lives and enjoy our lives and help people around us enjoy their lives too. Like that. So, suffering. Uh, here at Buddhism, sometimes people say Buddhism is about suffering, yeah? Well, it's a topic of Buddhism. Buddhism is really about joy being present and understanding how your mind and life works. But the Four Noble Truths are the, one of the main topics of Buddhism. The first Noble Truth is there is suffering. Not life is suffering, not everything is suffering, but suffering exists. You probably noticed, yeah. Suffering is not getting what you want. Suffering is having what you want go away. Suffering is having that image of what you think it should be not work out. Yeah. The second noble truth is there is a cause of suffering. The cause of suffering, uh, we can say several things about that, but we can summarize it as craving. Craving is identification with things that you should not identify, that are impersonal. Craving it can manifest as tension and tightness in the body. And it is the force, the energy that pulls you into your distraction. When you have uh, a distraction, it starts usually with a feeling, contact, a thought, a sound. Sound arises, uh, feeling, and then you tighten around it. Maybe you don't notice the tightness, but you do, and you have a thought about it. Then you have another thought and more thoughts, and before long, you're gone. So sound arises. It can be pleasant. It can be painful. It can be neutral, barely noticed. You tighten around it. You think about it. You think more. And if you think enough, before long, you have to do something. This process will t pull you into action. When you're sitting on the cushion, itches will come up. Itches are fun to talk about because they're funny. They're safe. They're going to happen. 
Yeah. Some other distractions will not be so funny. Yeah. But itches are funny. So you're sitting there and your nose itches. When you're in your, when you're meditation and you're mindful, now you have a choice. Your attention has gone to the itch. The itch gets stronger and you're thinking about it. Oh no, why is my nose itching again? When it, it can grow stronger until you choose to do something about it. Basically, one of three things can happen when you have a distraction. And it can be comforting to know only three things were going to happen here probably when you're doing the meditation. The first one is the itch will be strong or you won't notice it to, before you scratch it. So too late, scratch the itch. Okay, start over, go back to the practice. The other thing that can happen is the itch comes up and we six R. We go back to the object of meditation and we rest there. When there's not a lot of attachment around a distraction, uh, a hindrance that arises, the hindrance will go away all on its own quickly. When there's not attachment, what arises will pass quite quickly. And when you take your attention off of it and you stop feeding it, it will go away. When there is a lot of attachment uh, or some attachment, well, it's going to pull you back again. Even though you 6R, even though you relax, even though you come back, the itch persists. And then your attention goes back to your nose. So you do it again and you relax and you come back. And now you're in a loop with your distraction and your object of meditation. This is not a terrible place to be, though it may be frustrating at first because you have that distraction and you wish it wasn't there and not wanting it there, of course, is making it stronger and you're going back and forth. However, even at this place of going back and forth, you're not scratching your nose, right? This, this feeling has not taken control of your behavior. The itch came up on its own and it's not making you scratch your nose. How nice. As you relax and go back and forth, well, eventually uh, you may forget and you may scratch your nose or you may move on to something else. There may be a different distraction that arises. You may hear a sound and start thinking that I have a memory that comes up, right? And the itch may not go away. And again, this doesn't sound that good, right? Your nose is still itching and now you're, now you're thinking about something that happened last week. Actually, again, this is a pretty, pretty important uh, moment here. Again, your behavior is not controlled by the itch. You have broken the chain that is leading you to do something. And so you get to work with your memory or you get to work whatever it is, or maybe you get to be with loving kindness for a while and distracted. And this is a good outcome. And then sometimes, we work with our attachments enough and uh, a third option happens where the, the itch comes up, we relax, uh, come back, 6R. The itch pulls us again, we 6R again. We go back and forth until the itch goes away. The distraction is gone. The attachment has finally been let go of. We let go of the attachment because again, we're not giving it nutriment. We're not giving it attention. And so it can go away. When we finally let go of that attachment, however long it takes, we're not in control of this process. We can't happen, make it happen faster or slower. Well, we can make it happen slower by wanting it to, by, uh, by get, wanting it to be different than it is. When that, uh, distraction goes away, uh, there can be relief. The itch is gone and it's like a weight can be lifted off your shoulders briefly. And on the tail end of that relief, joy can arise in the body and mind settles down. The feeling of metta can be very strong. There can be happiness an uplifted mind and mind is much more steady in the object of meditation. There still can be thoughts here, 
there still can be distractions here. A little bit, a little bit of thought here and there. But you'll stay nicely with your object of meditation in, uh, for a period of time. Five minutes, 10 minutes, 40 minutes, it really d depends. After the joy, uh, after a while, the joy will fade away and you'll be left with the comfort in the body and mind. The body will be very comfortable, mind will still be calm. And this is happiness, this is sukha. And we rest in that as long as we do until uh, the session is over or perhaps another distraction comes up and the process starts again. What I'm describing here is the first jhana, the first stage of practice. And we'll be talking more about this later, but as you're sitting tomorrow, uh, remember as your distractions come up, they're not your enemies, they're your opportunities. They're, op they're opportunities to purify your mind, to learn how your mind works, and they can be doorways into more collectedness and deeper mind. These distractions are called hindrances. Hindrances are classified in five uh, types. Uh, we have restlessness, sloth and torpor. We have aversion, lust, and doubt. The first four are in pairs, restlessness and uh, sloth and torpor. Restlessness is too much energy, too much energy in the body and mind. It manifests as thinking, manifests as itches, uh, anxiousness, thoughts. Sloth and torpor is the opposite. Not enough energy in the body-mind to maintain mindfulness. This is sleepiness uh, or, or fuzziness. Yeah. When restlessness gets very intense, we want to jump out of our skin. Yeah. Anything else, yeah. When dullness gets too intense, when sloth and torpor gets too intense, we fall asleep. We can use these to help our minds balance. When we notice there's a lot of restlessness in the body, well, we can relax and back off and stop trying so hard. When there's dullness that's uh, coming up more, well, then we sharpen up and pay attention more to our object of meditation and gain interest in the process. Sometimes it helps to straighten up your spine more. Then uh, aversion and, and lust, yeah. This is, I like it, I don't like it. I want it, I don't want it. I don't want the itch to be there. You know, and hindrances will gang up on you. It's sometimes you get one at a time. Usually you get a couple. You get your itchy nose and you, not, you get to not like it. Yeah. And then you can doubt if you're doing the process correctly. Yeah. Doubt is wondering, am I doing this right? Is this right? Is this, what's going on? Doubt is okay. It's okay to look at what you are doing and wonder if you're doing it correctly and think about it. But when you think about it over and over again, it distracts you and that's not useful. So when we notice a hindrance arise, we uh, let it be there. We don't interfere. We don't try to change it. Because remember, a good way to generate suffering is to want something to be different than it is. And that is not going to work anyway. What is happening is what is happening. We can't change what's happening now, actually. We can change how we respond to it. We can fight with it. Yeah. Uh, if we don't like it, we can try to push it away. Or we can let it be there. If we like it, we can try to hang on to it and try to keep that good feeling there. Or we can let it be there. And the thing is, if we let it be there, it gets us what we want, right? We want the happy feeling to stay. We want the bad feeling to go away. When we allow it to be there as it is, both, both those things can happen. 
When we try to hang on to the happy feeling, poof, yeah. When we try to push away that itch, the bad feeling, that doesn't go poof. We reinforce it, yeah, and it gets stronger. So your hindrances will come up and that's gonna happen and that's okay. When they come up, don't fight with them. Don't uh, be hard on yourself. Oh no, I'm restless again. Oh no, I'm sleepy again. Yes, what am I doing wrong? Hmm. No. We have a plan. When they come up, you let them be there. You do the six R's, you recognize you're distracted, you relax, you smile, come back. And you go back to your object of meditation. As you rest with your object of meditation, if the hindrance is strong, well, it's going to pull your attention again. Again, not unexpected. We know what to do. Six R again, relax, smile, come back. May I be happy and stay with that feeling. So we have a plan. It's a simple plan. It's not an easy plan. <laughs> That's okay. The more you do this, the easier it will become. And the more you familiar are with your hindrances, the easier they will be to deal with. And the sooner you'll catch your mind going through this process. At first, you may find yourself fully in storyland, watching movies about what you're going to do next week, about what happened that you really think you should have changed if only you said that, something really pertinent to meditation. And that's okay. That's going to happen. That's going to happen. As you do this more and more, you'll be able to catch the process sooner and sooner. You catch the movie when it's starting. You'll catch the monologue earlier. You'll catch a word. You catch half a word starting. When you're sharp, you'll be able to stay with these places that you've noticed. Yep. You'll be able to watch the word come up and let it go over and over again. You'll be able to watch tension arise. When the tension arises, you can let it go as it comes up. And when you can let the tension go, it comes up. You can, as it comes up, you can stay with your object of meditation easier and easier. When you're with your object of meditation, it is, can be a spacious feeling. You're there, uh, things can arise and pass away. You don't have to get involved. You don't get, have to get pulled in like that. And when you get pulled in, you know what to do. Relax, let it go. Six R, come back. So these are in the instructions. Have fun with this. Smile. Fun is a word that is incredibly profound. When you're having fun, your mind is light. When you're having fun, you're present. When you're having fun, things are going, uh, going well. Yeah. So have fun. When you notice you're not having fun, that's okay. You have a hindrance, you have a distraction, you have an attachment coming up and you have an opportunity to relax and smile and come back. You don't make yourself not have a hindrance. You don't make yourself uh, have to feel good, yeah? But smile and let yourself feel good. 